Shut up and take my money. You know, I remember a time where games were so prevalent and not only that, they were super memorable as well. From anywhere from the Batman Arkham series to the vast world of Skyrim and the amazing gameplay of GTA 5, it makes you wonder, whatever happened to gaming in the current day and age that we know it to be? There's a couple of questions we need to ask ourselves as to what makes a good game. Simply put, I think it breaks down into three well-defined categories. Gameplay, replayability, and story. So what is gameplay at the end of the day? Gameplay is simply how you just play the game. And gameplay is very important because it is very distinct to how you interact with the game, graphics, its sound qualities, etc. It also comes down to its technical aspects like walking in a straight line or shooting a gun. If the gameplay mechanics make sense, if the gameplay is good, then people are going to feel involved, invested. They're going to want to come back and play more. And a very good example of this is Helldivers 2. As it's very intuitive, very involved, Involved, and a lot of players seem to enjoy themselves playing the same missions over and over again. However, if you go ahead and make really bad or clunky gameplay, no one's going to want to interact with them or the interaction will be very little. A very good example of this is Skull and Bones. Starting off with Skull and Bones, you have to understand that Skull and Bones, though it is mediocre at best, the reason why is because of the fact that you're just battling ships, they're way too easy, feels way too arcadey, and then whenever you go onto islands, whenever you try to to communicate with any kind of pirate like talk to them they're just a merchant and i don't know why and for some reason for some reason you can't swim in a game about pirates that bothers me to my very core how can i not swim but what i feel like they could have just gotten right is the fact that hey you're a pirate you want to take over ships you could have put more emphasis on the combat you could have put more emphasis on your interactions on the island instead of everyone being a merchant in some way or the other or just really boring dialogue where they just tell you to go from point A to point B but then you never understand what you're doing half the time. That itself, its gameplay, is very confusing and boring to say the least while its counterpart Black Flag got all of this right. I don't get it. Jumping into replayability, we have to understand to have a replayable game you must have a game that has great gameplay. Now what do I mean by this? If a game does not have a functional or good gameplay mechanics then what is the player going to get out of replaying the game? They're just going to be annoyed and and frankly speaking, any gameplay that is just terrible or clunky, no one wants to play it. Some great examples as to good games people love replaying are Skyrim, GTA 5, Helldivers 2, the entire Arkham series, and so on. A lot of these games are fundamentally really enjoyable and great to interact with. You never hear a complaint about clunky mechanics or you don't hear a complaint about how terrible the gameplay is, frankly, with any of these games because players at the end of the day enjoy their experiences with it. I have asked many people what they have thought about these games before I made this video and any time I have asked what they thought about GTA 5, Arkham, Skyrim, so on, they always said that the time that they played it, they've had a lot of fun and a lot of them have gone back and played those games again and they're always happy to play them yes are there better performing games are there games with better gameplay are there games with better gaming mechanics in 2024 absolutely however in the past they were the best for their time it makes those games replayable and it made them memorable moving on to stories stories are super important but they're also not always needed stories are what make the gamer or the player involved in the entire experience the gameplay is crafted to the story and if the story is really good then people will replay it for that story the reason i highlight gameplay and replayability is that a good story will always have good gameplay and it always drives a player to replay the game over and over again good examples of that are skyrim the witcher 3 the arkham series and i can name many more but bad examples of these are detrimental like suicide squad kill the justice league the reason i want to point out kill the justice league is solely for the fact that it does everything that gamers really did not want but focusing on the story today we have to go ahead and point out the fact that they went ahead and made batman arkham now this was one of kevin conroy's last roles and unfortunately speaking they disrespected the entire character and the fan base behind that character in a very unfortunate fashion and due to this it made a lot of people not even pick up the game in the first place and it only fueled more to the fire that it was already brewing a story can have that impact and sometimes a story doesn't need to be told to make a great game this is why a lot of studios need to understand if you're going to make a story don't do it to the detriment of the player and to your own game do it to enhance your game to make the gameplay that much better and to where we can have emotional connections with your characters 
so the franchise can continue and we can enjoy it. Now that we understand what makes a good game, we now have to ask ourselves, why did it get so bad? And I have a couple of points that can point to why it got so bad. One of the main points I think is woke culture. And the reason why I point woke culture out is because of the fact that there are two other burning issues under that, criticism and audience. Now, criticism can be good and bad, but let's go ahead and focus on good and then I'll talk about bad later. A very good example of good criticism actually comes from Skull and Bones. I know, shocker, right? But what I mean by that is when the beta for Skull and Bones came out, a lot of players gave good feedback as to what they wanted in the game and how to improve it. Unfortunately, the developers and Ubisoft just threw that out of the window and put out the dog shit that we have today. While bad criticism is detrimental to any game. Now, what do I mean by bad criticism? Bad criticism comes from a place where it has no intention to make the game any better. What, why this has to do with woke culture is so Solely for the fact that sometimes people will criticize games on how they feel about whatever the game has to offer. And this is very detrimental here. Gaming is meant for people that want to unwind and relax and just escape reality. It's why we craft worlds. It's why we go ahead and listen to different narrations and stories that intrigue us. And we play through all of it because we find it fun. It is not meant to be a political piece or a platform for safe space because we're trying to escape all of that in gaming. Forspoken is a very good example of this, as it tells a story of some girl that's trying to prove herself for reasons unbeknownst to me, and she lost her parents because reasons I don't even know why it's even relevant to the story, and it's in an environment that people want to escape from, and in a game that people thought was fun when they first saw the trailer, and then immediately on picking it up, could care less about. It is really unfortunate that the studio behind it had to shut down because of this entire blunder, and Square Enix his reputation was shot because of it. That's how bad it got. And it was all to appease people that honestly never even got into the gaming space to begin with. So then who was it made for? Why was it made? Are questions that I honestly will never find the proper answers to because there are no proper answers, which leads us into audience. And audience is very important to a game success. Here's what I mean. If other people who do not consume games are criticizing your work, it's best you ignore them because they are not going to buy your games at all. In fact, the people that do buy your games are expecting a certain standard, a certain story, a certain element that you provide that they enjoy. If you're going to listen to anyone, listen to the people that play your games. For example, are you going to listen to a Call of Duty player that has never picked up FIFA before in their life and then make FIFA off of their criticism? No, it makes no sense whatsoever. So then why should you go ahead and listen to anyone who have never picked up a single game in their life? Life or don't even touch the genre of gaming that is being criticized, but then you don't listen to the actual audience. This is something that always confused me about any of the developers behind story writings or behind the games that they make. It makes no sense for you to do this and you're not pleasing anyone. In fact, you're just pissing more people off. And this is the reason why I made this video. Listen to your audience and to no one else because we are the ones that want to play your game so bad and this is something that developers really need to be focused on you need to hear this over and over again i will come into your room when you sleep and whisper into your ear listen to your fucking audience because it is infuriating that they don't now, there is a redemption to all of this, as I think devs are slowly starting to wake up and realizing, you know what, maybe I shouldn't be taking advice from people that don't really play the games I'm making. And with that being said, I'm also excited about the fact that there are games like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth about to come out and Helldivers, and there are other games on their way that are going to be fantastic, no doubt, because the studios and the developers behind them actually understand what a good game looks like and they're willing to make it. With gaming being in such turmoil for the last decade, I think it's safe to say that we might see a rise in gaming once more because the people that grew up seeing amazing games and have been outspoken about games needing to be better are the same people that are entering that workforce or entering higher positions. And I really think that given the time that we have had to endure with all of the bullshit games that have come out, hopefully 
one day, people would have made such amazing creative games that even big companies, AAA companies, or the quote-unquote quadruple A companies will even say, you know what, it's time we step up our game too, just to compete. But with that being said, what game will you play next?